Oh my god, come here, dude. <laughs> All right, so I'm going so anyway, if it becomes a bit too rowdy, I will um basically have to mute, but that's okay. I can mute people. I have power. All right, so um hopefully it's the the teaching uh your teaching hasn't been too disruptive yet. Um so for this day, I just want to kind of use it to, sh to kind of talk and uh, demonstrate how I intend things to go for the, futures of the, for the future of the class. Um, so first off, again, for assignments, you can demo them to your TAs during your, their lab hours, which are now going to be done online. Um, the other thing to do is that you can demo them during my office hours, which again are going to be Monday and Tuesday. But if you can't make those, um, I find I find I actually have a preponderance of open time now for some reason. So um, I can totally, uh, if if you want to arrange a demo session, I can. Uh, I will be more than willing to help you with that. I've also um, given. So let's go ahead and just go over some stuff I've given, um, let's see, I need to, all oh, right, I have to share my screen, but let me pull up the appropriate thing. Do -do, share screen. Yeah, I'll share this screen. All right, so I've given more assignments. Um, I have it due for the end of the week for the readings, but you know, those are soft due dates again, right? And again, whatever you currently have, be it a, a zero through a five, whatever, I will update accordingly um, at the end of the semester. So, so if you get it all done by the end of the semester, I'm happy, right? These are soft due dates for getting these done. Um, the files ones in the dictionary, so going over files and going over dictionaries is the new one. We're gonna do a bit more string manipulation probably and then go on to, well, that really depends. Next. Yeah. I've got a hand raised. What's up? The, are, is this the same as before where it's out of five? Yes. It's the same grade. So it, it just get, I'll just simply update it based on the amount of work you get done. So like if you get it all done by the end of the semester, it will be five out of five. Okay. If you, if you decide, if you go up like, if you don't do any, if you got, if you have a five right now and then decide not to do anything else for the rest of the semester, you're most likely going to end up with a, with a three. Make sense? Yeah. I'll be, I, I update it based on, this is mainly for basically keeping, this is a freebie grade, mainly for keeping uh, track of you. Let me see. Can I lower your hand? Yes, I can. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's really nice. It came up with a nice pop-up saying that, that uh, Jaden had raised his hand. That was really convenient. Okay, so next let's go on to the YouTubes, um, which I don't know why certain things come up on my YouTube, um, especially considering I try to subscribe to really good stuff. Um, so let's go over here. So over here in your playlist, Let's see, that should be over here. And why does, okay. For some reason, a bunch of this didn't get put in. I will fix that after this lecture, the playlist after this lecture, but there should be videos over here. I don't know what happened to them because I was uploading them. They're all uploaded. Okay, yes, chat, boom. Oh, no, that was Discord chat. I'm gonna close Discord. All right. So, yeah, I'll have more files over here because I went over files and paths and I went over file reading, which without it, baby's first malware doesn't really make sense. But um, say by today, I'll have up all, I sh so all the videos are there. I'll have them in the correct order. I don't know why they're currently not in the correct order. So, bu -bu 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 yeah, normally I don't really care about the playlist because I've already have my playlists up and running, but yeah, now that it's online, that's gonna have to change. So I'll be paying more attention to that. Um, now, fi finally, a lot of what we're gonna be doing in these classes, because you're gonna be watching lectures, is exercises that review, review this kind of stuff. 
So we're going to go over, <laughs> sorry, my toddler in, in the background doing, doing toddler things, you know? All right. So I've got two exercises I'm prepared to go over today and uh, to kind of lead you through today. Um, and I was, and I'm of the opinion of letting you do this. I plan on doing converting Roman numerals on Thursday because I want to make sure I know that one because I have an embarrassing story to tell about myself in Roman numerals. So, um, but today we can either go over uh, code making and code breaking or the most, or what I consider the greatest math problem ever. So any opinions as to whether you want to do string manipulation or you want to go over the, the greatest math problem ever. And it's not a very hard one to understand. Math problem. Oh, wow. Seriously, people are really want the math problem. Okay. So today, so you might want to open your text. So go ahead and open your textbook up to, um, to, pay, to chapter 12 um, or project number 12. Monte Carlo sim simulation and um, and Moss Savant. Let me go ahead and mute everybody for a second. Participants, mute all. Okay, hopefully that didn't get me as well. So if you, all right, great. So you can unmute yourself, hopefully, but let's go ahead and talk, talk about um, the Monty. So, so what we're gonna be going over next uh, is Monte Carlo simulations uh, next, starting next week. Um, and I'm gonna give you a taste of it this week because um, it is, um, and what's re really great is that it, whoops that's a bit too big, is that basically we're gonna learn about Monte Carlo through another Monte called Monte Hall. It's like super convenient, um, the Monte Hall problem. Um, yeah, so now back in 75, in, sorry, in 90, in the 1990s, um, there was a woman called Marilyn uh, Vosavant uh, who had a column in Parade Magazine, right? Was Parade, it's this, Sunday newspaper magazine that you get um, as part of a bunch of other newspapers. So um, very interesting. But anyway, this woman, uh, she has the, um, she was listed as having the highest recorded IQ, which by the way, if you haven't learned, uh, listened, if you haven't listened to NPR's podcast on G, um, which is general intelligence and the, kind of the way of how do you measure intelligence and and all sorts of IQ, uh, IQ test related stuff. It's really good. Now there are issues with the in IQ that in that sense that people do will score very low on it that who shouldn't get it. But people who score very high, that can be very interesting. But anyway, she solves puzzles in, the, uh, she had this column in 1986. I think she still does it. Ask Marilyn, and she solves problems. And yes, among them is the Monty Hall problem. So, for those of you who don't know, because I was also too young for this, there used to be uh, this show called Let's Make a Deal. Okay. Um, and if you're interested in seeing an episode, they've got it linked in the textbook. But essentially, the idea is that you've got three doors. Suppose you're on a game show and you're given three, the choice of three doors. Behind one is a car and behind the others, goats. Now, okay, so now personally, I would want the goat, but here we're assuming you want the car. So, um, you know, so you got one awesome prize and two not so awesome prizes. So the idea here is you pick a door, one, and the host, Monty Hall, says, uh, says, well, I know what's behind all of them. I'm gonna open another door, say number three, and it has a goat. He then says, do you want to pick number two? Is it your advantage to switch or not? 
So basically here he's asking, hey, you got these three doors. You're going to pick something. And I'm going to open up the door. Of, and, and here's the key here, key assumption. I'm, I'm always going to reveal a goat. Is it your advantage to switch or not? And I see people in, two people in chat saying, three people in chat saying, it's your advantage to switch. It's a famous problem. Somebody saying, no, don't switch, don't switch. Now, what's amazing about this is that, um, now what we're gonna show is that basically that, so under the standard assumptions, she says you should always switch and that she says that you will have a two third chance of winning the car if you switch, where if you stick with your initial change uh, chance, you only have a one and th one th third. Now, what was amazing about this was many readers of Vasavant's columns refused to believe switching was beneficial to her, was beneficial despite her explanation. After the problem appealed in Parade, among 10,000 readers, including 1,000 with PhDs, wrote to the magazine, most of them claiming that she was wrong. Um, now, mind you, I'm gonna point out so that, that this problem was, was posted in 1975 as well, prior, and done by a dude, and nobody seemed to have a problem with that. But then again, it also wasn't in Parade Magazine. So, yay feminism, I guess. <sighs> so, the point be, so now the math behind it is kind of interesting. But the idea here is like, wait a second, how can I, how do we prove? So if we look down here and look at the solution, suddenly we see there's a giant Wikipedia article and there's math and diagrams and stuff. And ah, what's this? Oh God, equations. I don't want any of this, right? Everybody hates this, right? So the idea here between a, on a Monte Carlo simulation is that we are just going to play this game a bunch of times and we're gonna simulate our strategy. That way, we don't bother doing any of the messy calculus, any of the messy calculations, no, no real thinking required, in other words. We just, you know, uh, just try it out and see how it works. Um, and that's what I'm, and so that's what I'm, we're gonna do today. But I'm gonna go ahead and try to explain, the, uh, explain it before we get it. The idea here is that, um, if you always pick door number one, right? There's three possible configurations. Goat, goat, car, goat, car, goat, car, goat, goat. So if you pick do door number one, you've got a one in three chance of getting the, uh, there's a one in three chance that the car is your, um, is your choice. And if you stick with it, great, you win the car. But you've got a two, three ch and third chance of picking a goat. And if you stick with your initial choice, you get a goat. So, if you sw so the strategy says, instead, what you're gonna do is switch. Now, the reason it's, it's advantageous to switch is because the idea here is, is that we, the, um, is that we have, when we pick something, He's gonna reveal something that's not, he's gonna reveal something that's not a goat. Now when, oh, sorry, he's gonna reveal something that's not a car. He's gonna pick something that's a goat. And because we pick something initially that has the, that is most likely a goat, we were most likely wrong, right? Two third chance of being wrong. If we switch, well, the if we switch, then that, that remaining, one has a two thirds chance of being correct. It's a weird explanation. There's a lot of different stuff. And honestly, I didn't believe it until I wrote a Monte Carlo method myself to figure this out. So, um, so does anybody want, do people want me, uh, want to see me uh, write a Monte Carlo method for this and, and show you how that works? All right. And then what we're gonna do after that is that we are going to use the, once we're done there, we're gonna use a Monte Carlo method to approximate pi uh, for our remaining assignment in class. So I'll start by opening up code. Um, first off, I wanna make sure, uh, no, I don't need 
Java. I'm going to just do Python class, boom, 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 classroom, ITP. Let's do um, spring 2020. Um, okay. Monty Hall. Dot py. Okay. Until J requires you. Okay, enable it, reload window. Okay. So we've so I'm here using Visual Studio Code. It's by the way, a pretty amazing program if you haven't tried it. Um it's uh, open source by Microsoft. So it's one of the very few good, thi few good things that Microsoft has done that's open source. Now I'm sure they've done plenty good that's open source. All right, so the idea here is that we are going to, um, so first we're gonna need the uh, random module, right? I know, I actually, I hate all operating systems equally. I hate Microsoft because it's closed sort. I hate Ma a source I, and not compatible with a lot of Linux stuff. I hate Macs because they're overpriced and I hate Linux because it doesn't work with a lot of the stuff I like. There. Um, but in seriousness, I love, I love Microsoft stuff. I love Windows because I can game on it and do VR. Macs are aesthetically really pleasing and Linux is super customizable. Um, I enjoy Linux a lot and I enjoy, and the really, if I could get off of windows, I would, but I'm using it for a lot of music composition software as well as, um, VR. So there's nothing wrong with Macs. Macs are pretty cool. They've got, um, you know, I think, well, sorry, there is one wrong thing, but they are aware of it and they're fixing it. The, uh, which is the butterfly keyboard. I find them tactilely pleasing, but they have issues with the keyboard, with the dust being get, uh, getting under the keyboard. All right, so let's go ahead and review. <laughs> now, nah, Macs are really well designed and because of the way that, that software is integrated with the hardware, they really know how to push this stuff there. So let's go ahead and let's see, I think it's random.randint. Let's see. And so what I love about this is I get suggestions. Um, let's see. So A, B, both endpoints. So right to review, one to six. Okay, so if we generate a random number like this, this will, we'll see that basically we've got, um, this will generate some random number one to six. Run it, three, two, four. Yeah, remind me later and I'll be happy to share some music. Okay, so we got something. Um, now, because this is randomly distributed, uh, let's go ahead and make a dictionary to hold a bunch of results. So one, two, so one, colon zero, Copy, paste, 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 insert. Do I, does it do insert? No. Nobody uses insert these days. Three, four, five, and six. So this is a dictionary saying we have zero, we've counted zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, zero, five, zero, six. So let's say we, this is simulating a dice roll, okay? Some number, a dice with some number of, uh, you know, with some weight. Now, suppose we wanted to check that this die was actually balanced. We could do a Monte Carlo simulation and essentially roll it at, let's say, 6,000 times. So for roll in range 6,000. So we'll go ahead and generate this a bunch of time or roll this a bunch of times. Um, and we'll say X is equal to, let's go ahead and cut that, we'll call it blank over here. You can go blank if you don't care what the variable is right there. So we'll say roll. And then for a dictionary, we're gonna say, hey, increase the key, not doll, roll, is equal to uh, d a roll plus one. So what we're doing here is we're increasing the count Everybody comfortable with that? So every time I roll one, the one's gonna increase. Every time I roll two, the two's gonna increase. 
three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. Okay. So, uh, right, I didn't do anything. So print D and we see that basically that they're kind of even, right? We've kind of got one, uh, two, three, four, five, right? There was about a thousand each, although two's less likely. But if we ran it again, we'd get different results. But they're fairly even, a six, perfectly one six of the time. Now, you'd expect there to be some, some amount of difference, but not too much, right? The, um, it's not gonna vary too much. They're uniformly distributed, right? If you flip a coin 10 times, you're not gonna get it five heads and five tails. You're gonna get some other, dis you're gonna get some distribution, which is closest to, and five and five is just gonna be the most common one. So this is essentially what a Monte Carlo simulation is. Just simply doing something a bunch of times and then checking your results. So let's go ahead and see where, um, let's go ahead and see how this is gonna work for our, um, for our goats and cars. So we've got basically um, doors is equal to um, goat. Well, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and just simply say, yep, goat, Doors is equal to goat, comma, goat, comma, goat. So we've got three goats here and we're gonna replace one of them with a car, okay? So we've got three goats here. Let's go ahead and say um, car index is equal to door random dot randint and we want index zero to two, is zero up to including two. So random is different in the sense that it's inclusive on both ends for some reason. I don't know why, but whatever. So now we know where our car is and we'll just simply say doors, um, car index is equal to car. So let's go ahead and see what this does for us. What this does, well, what it does do for us is that now we're generating a, a random distribution. Uh, you know, we're generating basically a different place for the car to be each time. So, so notice that it changes the location each time. Let's see. Okay, I'm just making sure I was still recording. Okay. So we've got goat, goat, goat. So we've got our goat, we have a way of generating where the car is. And now let's go ahead and say, um, let's, so now let's go ahead and we can either randomly pick a dwarf that's gonna be our first choice, or we can just simply say our first choice, let's go ahead and just say our first choice is equal to zero, right? We're gonna go and pick, Instead of doors one, two, three, because we're doing com this computer science like, we're going to do zero, one, two. So my first choice is always, I'm always going to say, go with car zero or door zero. Okay. First choice. So let's go ahead and see. So the idea here is now that he would reveal to me a goat. So because I picked zero, if door, so if door, whoops, if door one is equal to goat, do the following, else we're gonna do the other, else we're gonna do the other stuff. So pass, pass, there we go. So if it's a goat, so if door one is a goat, then that means either my first choice is a goat, so second is equal to, so let's see. 
and then switch equal to true. We're gonna have a little. Um, no, because we don't know where we don't know if door zero is gonna be a goat. I'm probably going this. Yes, it is recorded. Um, I'm going a bit in a different direction than saying if zero. I'm going if if door one is the goat that gets revealed, or is it door two that gets revealed? Okay, because door zero is not gonna get revealed. So let's see. There's different ways to simulate this, by the way. I'm trying to simulate it more directly just to kind of show, show it. So I'm going to go ahead. If door, so let's go ahead and go with the switch strategy. So if, so let's say we're switching, okay? If door one is the goat, then my second choice is going to be uh, door then I would switch to door to door two. Okay. All right. If doors one is equal to goat, then I would switch to doors two. And if second choice equal equals car print win. Else I got the goat, which means print goat. And in this case, that does not mean greatest of all time. All right. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm just going to copy this and do the same thing for one. <laughs> or does it? Great. All right. So here, otherwise, my second choice, right? So if so, let me add some comments to add some commentary here. Monty, say index one to be more specific to be a goat. Okay. And then over here, we will do the same thing, but he reveals index two to be a goat, so we'll take index one instead. And that's the switch strategy. Else, um, if we just stay with what we are, if we just stay with what we have, um, if door uh, zero, if doors zero, equal equals a car print win. else doors zero or sorry otherwise print goat okay so here we've got our, we've basically got this. So now if I run this, it'll automatically simulate it win, win, win. Let's go ahead and, okay, hopefully I'm not messing something too much up. Let's go ahead and see what happens if I change switch to, false. Something wrong with my logic, maybe. Either that or I'm just exceedingly lucky. Goat. Goat. Yeah, so I'm choosing... Ah. Uh, what am I missing? Let's see. So I select zero to be my to be door number zero okay and then if switch so depend so i'm gonna go with the strategy of switching something if door one is equal so i'm select door zero what happened oh no we have a tragedy with my with my toddler he dropped his pizza so Doors one is equal to goat. Reveals the index to be one. It reveals index one to be a goat. Takes index two. <laughs> 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 
the uh <laughs> oh, you guys are great. Okay. So if second choice is equal to car, print win. Otherwise, print a goat. So I think this is correct. But really, we don't have a way of knowing. I could just be getting incredibly lucky. Aha. In t unless I do unless I do a number of runs of this, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, I'm going to create a dictionary called results is equal to um, cars. R is equal to zero and goat is equal to, and we're going to get this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to count the number of times we we that this happens so here if my second choice was a it was a car instead of printing i'm going to say uh doors not doors but results are plus one but honestly i can just simply just say that i can actually just do this results second choice is equal to results second choice plus one so take what so second choice is either going to be a car or goat i take the number of cars and the number of goats and add one to them and store that back in. So, here we go. And then else if else, and this simplifies it actually quite a bit. So if my strategy is to not switch, I'm just going to stick with my first choice. Results is a variable. Let me go ahead and get you to it. Results is right up here. Excellent question. Results is right up here. It just got trimmed off. Results is a dictionary. Does that answer your question? Awesome. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to select it all, hit tab to tab it all over which makes it bug out for a second. But I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this a thousand times for blank in range. We're gonna do this a thousand times and we're gonna play this game a thousand times and we're going to print a four key in results, print key, results key so that will print it out prettily so car thousand so so go to thousand that probably means i did something wrong there oh i know exactly what i'm doing wrong there um Right, I was doing the same puzzle over and over again. So let's go ahead and take these guys and we gotta reinitialize uh, all this stuff in here. Right, so we need to generate a new, uh, new set of doors each time. See, again, the issue is I make, my issue is again, Again, is that I, I also make mistakes, just like you, but I've made these mistakes enough that I can very, very quickly see, oh, this is this kind of mistake. So, so here is our full program. Results, we take our results, we run it, and let's run it again. We've got 666 versus 334 here so we get about two-thirds we get are getting approximately two-thirds 
pretty much dead on two thirds each time um, that we do this. Uh, if on the other hand, we decide not to switch it, else false, what did I do? Results first choice, what did I do wrong? Key error zero. Ah, first choice. Ah, that's what it is. First choice is equal to, hmm. Or zero. There we go. 318. So if I'm staying still, I get 682 goats. Now, and this is part of the reason why people have so much issues with this, is that you feel like if you're staying still, it should just be a 50-50 shot of you getting a goat, right? Okay, I can kind of understand if I'm switching. Yeah, that makes sense because there was a two-thirds chance I was wrong. So if I switch, two-thirds chance I'm right. But I mean, but if there's two left, right, and I switch and I decide to stay put, right? I should at least be able to have a, you know, a chance there. So the issue is, is that, um, that you're, it would be a 50, 50 shot if there were only two door, uh, only two doors to begin with, but there's not, there's, um, there's three doors. And then we remove one after giving you, after telling you what is behind one of them, which is makes it an entirely different problem. So note that we did not have to do any statistical analysis there, right? We've done literally no statistical analysis. If we needed to be more exact, we can just run it a bunch more times, right? And we can say, and then we can say the percentage, and let's, if we need to be really exact, we can put it in terms of percentage, or this in a variable, boom, do trials, over here and then do results divided by trials. And if we want it to be really nice, I'll say sep is equal to um, slash tab so that they're separated by tabs. And so now it's gonna be formatted really nicely. And look at that. We end up with very, 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 you know, again, we, can, we basically ended up with the same thing that, that, uh, that, that, the, that the Monty Hall problem says that we should end up with. But with none of this icky math over here, none of this icky probabilities, right? No having to do calculations. Um, so the Monty, this is what we call Monte Carlo method. Um, and it sounds super complicated, but it's really not. Um, special, yeah, under comp underlying constants is randomness to solve problems that might be deterministic in principle. The idea here is that we, there's a lot of stuff here, degrees of freedom, interacting particles, but the idea here is that basically, the idea here is that if you just needed to try something, you would, go out and try it. Or if you want to figure out the, uh, so the idea here is that we would, if you don't know the, so Monte Carlo, why is it named after Monte Carlo anyway? So, um, let's see, anybody actually know where Monte Carlo is? Just FYI? It ties into the whole name thing. Maps dot Google, yeah, Monaco. Or is it Monaco? All right, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and go over to here. I might have to do editing so I don't post my home address online. Woohoo, yay, that'll be great. All right, so Monaco, looks like it's part of France, right? See, 
Monte Carlo is that little thing in Monaco. Where is Monaco is this uh, state over here. Um, I think it's a, what, a microstate? As opposed, uh, just like Andorra over here, which is an entire country itself. Um, it's ruled by, it has co-leaders, uh, one of which is always the current president of France, I believe. Uh, there's a bunch of these little microstates all uh, just kind of all over the place. I mean, you know about Luxembourg and Liechtenstein, I'm sure. Like Liechtenstein over here. But um, anyway, Monaco, so back to Monaco uh, and Monte Carlo. Uh, Monte Carlo specifically is known for, ah, there it is. Monaco, Monte Carlo specifically is, let's see, known for the Monte Carlo Casino. It's very, very famous for gambling. And the idea here is that you go to Monte Carlo, you don't know the odds of some games, so you just watch the results of these games and tally them up. And if you do so, you're going to figure out the odds. Right? Watch enough games, you'll figure out the odds. So, um, anyway, and that's what we do here. We just simulate this enough times and we figure out the odds. We didn't know the odds from just one trial. But we can figure it out from multiple trials. So one thing that we can do with this is approximating pi. And this is one of the more classic ones. I actually did this as part, it's actually a very classical problem. I did it as part of my getting my master's degree. Um, we ran this specific problem to show that I could uh, do distributed, uh, because it's a classic distributed computation problem. So, right, um, pi. Right, pi, we, we went over approximating pi with an accumulator, like pi over four is equal to one over one minus one over three plus one fifth, right? The Monte Carlo simulation is a lot more fun though, as it says. Um, and the idea here is that suppose we are going to throw darts at a dartboard, which, you know, let's see, can I, can I annotate? Yes. Suppose I've got a, um, a square over here that's acting and I've got a dartboard in it. Okay. Yeah, I, I know I'm, why am I doing this with the mouse? I got, I totally got a, a drawing pad for this. All right. The idea here is that we've got, if we're throwing darts, most of these darts are going to hit the board and some of them are going to miss. And so, um, but let's assume that basically no dart is going to end up outside this square. The idea here is that, uh -huh. let me just do a better job of drawing this. Okay. Let's see. Let's do a better job of drawing this. Okay. So there. So, boop, 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 boop. Okay, so we've got this square here, and then we've got a circle whose radius is the same, uh, sorry, whose diameter is the same as the side of the square, right? So we've got this circle with a radius of one over here, okay? And then we draw a square around it, around our unit circle. So over here, you've got a side of, so let's see, would be a two, oh, radius of one over here, so it's a diameter of two. So boom, so that's, so that's equal to radius one. Yeah, not the greatest, but hey. And so this is a, whoops, control Z, can I, yay, I can control Z that, nice. So this is a two by two square, uh, uh, a dartboard. The idea here is that every dart we throw, and let's go ahead, and can I change the ink? Yes. Every dart I throw is gonna end up somewhere in this square. It can end up here, could end up here, could end up here, and get end up here. 
Now the idea, so how does this give us the value of pi, just throwing something at a dartboard? Um, the idea here is that um, we know if a dart lands on the circle, um, and then, well, what we can do is that we can actually just count these darts. So the circle, so, so anybody recall what exactly pi is describing? What does pi describe? Anyone? Uh, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you or you can type it into chat. Ratio of diameter to circumference, right? So the idea, or the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> right? No, I get what you're saying, but the idea here is the ratio. So actually, what's cool is that since we know that the area of, of the circle is, so we're going to use another ratio to our advantage. The uh, area of this circle, um, sorry, so this, sorry, this, this square, sorry, this circle has an area of two uh, pi r, right? That's the area of the circle, 2 pi r. So we know that the radius is what? Radius is, sorry, not 2 pi r, it's pi r squared. Pi r squared. So we know that basically that that's the area of the circle. The area of the um, of the square is the side squared. So it would be two squared, right? So basically because, because we, uh, of this, if we're, the radius is one. The radius is one, the diameter is two, so it's a two by two square. So, so over here, since the area is two pi, the unit circle is just pi. Or sorry, since this area is two pi r squared, the area is just pi. And so the circle is, sorry, the area is a two by two square. Oh, I'm doing a terrible job of this, but whatever. Anyway, so the idea here is that if we can count the ratio of stuff that lands in the darts area to the stuff that lands in the, uh, that lands outside of it, it will give us our appropriate radius. And so what we're going to do um, is that, or what I'd like you guys to try to do is essentially uh, to use turtles to do this, to simulate this, because why not? Oh, hey, how do I, let me get this off my screen. Clear. All drawings. Boom. Because we still have like a bunch of time left. So Right, your code here, so ba -ba -ba -bum. So I will go ahead and get you guys started and I'm gonna share that code with you. And then you guys can work on it uh, in groups and that'll be your in-class assignment for the day. So, because what I found out is that if I hit this button over here, I can give you the code I have over here. So, um, import turtle. Right, so the idea here is that um, window set world, world coordinates. So this is something that you're gonna see in the, that you should see in the hurricane tracker, which says that basically that the idea here is that the coordinates for the turtle is gonna exist in only will exist, you know, rather than being on an infant plane, it's gonna be, um, oh, it's gonna only be between these coordinates. So Python set wind coordinates. Set world coordinates. Ah, the a number, the upper left of the screen, the lower left. Uh huh. So it sets up a world if necessary. So boom. So we can set this up over here. Let's go ahead and close you. So Monte Carlo. Boom. Uh, turtle dot set world coordinates. Uh, 
left lower x, lower left x. So that would be negative one, negative one, M1, M1, right? Let's save and run this just to check. Uh, module has no, screen. Where do I, how do I get screen? Turtle that screen. Boo. Yep, chapter 12. Sorry, I didn't see that. Thank you for answering. And save and run. Module has no attribute screens. So turtles. So how do I get the screen? Because I've done this before. It's frustrating that. Oh, did I? Oh. App. Of course. Okay. So one more. So basically, if I say, uh, so if I say, so let's go ahead and say Bob is equal to turtle dot turtle. It's really hard to type when you've got a microphone right in front of you. Also, when you have pause. So, turtle dot uh, turtle is equal to. Okay, and Bob dot go to one negative one save and run we can see that now net one negative one is right over here so that's what this line did it said that this is basically our one our two by two square set up in the way it is all right so now i'm going to go ahead and make some skeleton code for you to figure out so the idea here is let's do Bob dot and up, right? And remember Bob dot stamp to get stuff in. Stamp, assuming I can, I can do that. Okay, Bob dot, um, Right, and remember Bob that stamp will put a stamp of him somewhere. So now what we can do is, is that we can say, hey, let's go ahead and choose a location at random. Okay, so X, Y, so let's see, yep. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this code that I have, all right? And what I want you to do is I want you to uh, share, I'm sorry, I want you to modify it so basically we get a thousand random stamps on the board. That's our starting point. A thousand random stamps. Don't care if they're inside the circle, there are imaginary circle here or not. I just want a thousand random stamps between, between, uh, uh, between negative one and one for X and Y. Uh, the function to help you, random, uh, ba, 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 random Python based on recent activity. Um, let's, hello. Um, did it change for you? I shared the code. Yes. Press load history. Thank you. Gosh, having a bunch of people who are willing to be so, uh, who are willing to help it makes this so much easier. Okay. Um, random. Rand range. Rand int. There should be a rand. Ah, there we go. Random.random .random should be good because that will give you a value between zero and one floating point. So random.random .random is what you're gonna wanna use. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and you guys can work on that together. 
and I'm going to switch you up and let's go ahead and throw uh, throw four of you in a room together. Okay. I'll give you guys about uh, five, five, seven minutes to work on this together. And there you go. Automatically create rooms and open all rooms. There you go. You've all been invited to join a separate break, breakout room. Assign to breakout room seven. number of people who are AFK. Oh, there they go. Hey there. Hello. That, Hello. So, so not rand int, but random, not random. You had the for loop pretty good, though. Oh, okay. So, and then indent bob dot And so what you're going to want to do is then move bob to that x, y location using the go to method. Okay, that's okay. So random, not random with parentheses. It's a function call. Right. It gives you a random number between zero and one, which. Oh, that's fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Whoops. Um, yeah, I know. It's like a reflexive twitch. <laughs> um, then move and Bob. Then Bob.go to. Just. Mm -hmm. And then he's got to go somewhere. Oh. He takes in an X and a Y coordinate, incidentally. Oh, right, right, right. So you do yep. like that? Uh-huh. Well, well, the only, well, <laughs> now you got to actually have him stamp, want, you want to put stamp inside the, uh, th in the Right, thing. like that. Right. It like I'm just passing out. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, yeah. That's what our issue is, though. We've got zero to one, right? So he's, on he's only going from zero to one is a bit of an issue, right? Mm -hmm. He's not going from, uh, so let me see what the um, issue is there. Um, okay. Uh, try random.uniform instead from negative one to negative one. Random.uniform instead of random.random. Oh. Uniform. And then negative one to one. And try that. I'm going to go and broadcast that message. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay, broadcast a message. Yeah, that works. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Try using Wait, if it keeps going, isn't it going to black out the whole screen? Um. Yeah, I mean, you could Should we stop it at a certain point? I mean, it's going to stop at that uh, Oh, 1,000, so. 
Okay, I'm gonna jump to another room. Right. All right. Cool. Hello. Hello. Anybody want some help or anything? Can you say no to a face like this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but seriously, are you guys just working uh, alone on each of these? Yeah, we're just trying to figure it out on our own first. Okay. See what's going on. I sent a message saying use random uh, random dot uniform uh, random dot uniform. So you'll want to try using that random dot uniform from negative one, one to one. <laughs> <clears throat> it might be easier if one of you decides to share your screen, by the way. So, all right, I'm going to jump to another room. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Hi there. Uh, I don't know where to hey. start. Really. Perfect. All right, it's probably best if one of you shares your screen. Uh, I would I don't know how to do that. It's uh the green oh, button at the bottom. Right, I'll just pay for that later. So okay. Um right now you're already we'll showing yeah. right. See? All right. So you're gonna want to put the X and Y inside of a for and the stamp inside of a for loop. Yeah. Alright. Okay, for alright. Uh-huh. Yeah, who the hell uses turtle? And then what you're going to want to do is also, it should be screen.set world coordinates up there on line seven. Screen. And then for, uh, loop, for loop in range, one, uh, try 100. 100 colon after the 12. Sorry, colon at the end of the line for the for loop. Uh, uh, uh. And then 13 and 14, it should be negative one to one as opposed to ne one one. Oh, okay. okay. Now make the turtle go, now make Bob go to X and Y. Uh, make him go, uh, use the go to method to make him go there. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, okay. Screen. See ya. I've got somebody else asking for help. Then make the animation. Hello. hello. Hi. Oh, hello. Oh, very Hi. Good. One of you want to share your screen? Please. <laughs> um, I know this 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 avatar is disturbingly cute. I like it a lot. I think you should just teach all your classes as the dog. I'm not gonna do all of them as as this dog. I've got a bunch of outfits. Okay. All all right. Awesome. So. Well, so <laughs> we right. kind of don't know what to do. All right. So. In that case, give me one second. I am going to request remote control to help you out here. Mm -hmm. oh, Woohoo! Okay. Oh my god, that's so weird. Yes. Okay. I it you can tell that I might you know I taught a bunch of classes using Zoom actually. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's a bit tricky when when you're teaching people in Japan because the keyboard is completely different. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> well, not completely. It's just everything above that's not a letter. So here. We've got our Bob, and what we're going to do is that basically we're saying uh, random not uniform. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a random X. We're going to choose a random Y. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to say Bob dot go to that X, Y. The hardest part about this is the is the lag between me typing and it appearing. So, for i in range one hundred. So, let's generate a bunch of points, and then let's just go ahead and put this in. There we go. And now if we run this, error. Random is not defined. Ah. 
Yeah, I just did that, but it just gave me a bunch of lines. <laughs> like all connected oh, along with like, a bunch of random oh. notes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, Bob.penup. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. And that's it. So I'm going to jump out of here and call and start getting people back. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. No worries. All right. So how do I... Breakout rooms. That's right. Close all rooms. Return to main. So that, so that was either amazingly helpful or amazingly unhelpful. Let's find out. All right. So. All right, almost every, let's see how the breakout rooms are going. 30 more seconds for them. Hey, Laser, how's everything going? Hello. You're just cleaning your room. All right, I think. They are, all right, so breakout rooms are done for right now. So let me go ahead and show you, uh, show you an answer. All right, chat. Yeah, this what you were just doing, that's what you're gonna be submitting. So let's finish. So let me show you what, what the answer was for this or what we were aiming for. So let's go ahead and put bob.stamp there. X is equal to random dot, oh, got import random, of course. Random dot uniform uh, negative one, one, y, or I in range, let's do a hundred of these suckers. And then Bob. Okay, and run. So now we've got a bunch of turtles just kind of appearing uh, everywhere. So now what we can do with this is that we can start using this to approximate pi by detecting the distance from uh, what the distance is. Essentially, because we know this, there's a unit circle in here with a radius of one, that if it's inside the circle, then it's distance from the center is going to be uh, is going to be one. So everything from a center has a distance one. If it's on if it's on if it's within the circle over here, sorry, or any dot that ends that's within uh, the radius will end up in the circle, and it'll have a distance of one or less. But if it's outside the circle, it will have a distance of greater than one. So how do you calculate Euclidean distance? Nope, oh, let's go ahead and calculate the distance. Distance is equal to x squared plus y squared. Haven't really gone over what the math function, what the square root function is, but it's in math. Let me just do math dot square root. All right, x squared plus y squared, and we get the distance. So we'll be able to find out what our distance is. And now here's the really cool part. So we're gonna say, hey, 
if distance is less than or equal to one, in other words, if it's inside, if this x y coordinate is inside the inside our circle, right? We and we know it is because the radius is one. So we're just getting basically does it does it go farther than the radius sticks out? And if if it doesn't, then we'll say Bob dot color blue. Otherwise, we'll say Bob dot color red. And this is what's really cool. So that doesn't really show you too much, but um, what I can do is I can use some other functions. Uh, let's go, if I use the tracer function, let's see. Uh, turtle dot tracer. I think it's 100, 1000. It's in turtle. Let me look that up. Turtle dot tracer. Um, either one is fine. Uh, the submitting the previous one or the one with the distance one. Either one is fine. So let's go ahead and do. Oh, wrong one. Okay, and okay, sir. You can if you want to, or you can upload a file. But yes, you're submitting it on Canvas. Tracer none. Let's go ahead and just say tracer uh, 50. the screen. There we go. So that will go much faster if I do it like that. So if I do a thousand or 10,000, we suddenly see that we've got a circle. Uh, three, it will be under 317. Um, the assignment will be submitted under th in under the Let's see. So all I've done was just color things uh, if they're if they're closer or farther, and that just gives us a visual representation of the thing of what this is. And again, all we're doing is just choosing random numbers out of here. Yeah, this wasn't necessarily my greatest lecture because again, things online are always a bit weird, but. It's a really cool uh, thing. Um, what's cool about this is that it's actually really good for dis testing distributed systems because you can take one computer's random results and merge them with another computer's random results. So, no, um, and what we can do is again, we can take the ratio of, of, um, of these things and count the number of hits inside and the number of hits outside. If you want to do that, you can. But for right now, I will leave you with this code. Share code, boom. And I think that's it for the lecture. So I will be happy to demo stuff. Oh, where do you submit? Great question. No, but really, um, over here in assignments, let's go ahead and boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. Under here, 317 exercise. Just click on it. Um, and then there should be a text box or entry. So if you want to submit it by text box, just simply select the box, hit Control A, Control C, or Command A, Command C if you're on a Mac, and dump it in the text box. Or, you know, uh, load history. Um, 
Okay, how do you how do you see the share code? Um, hit load history, which would be up there. Um, like for instance. Okay, so if we didn't do that, I will be sending out a excellent. Okay, let me go through these questions one time. Office hours. Office hours will be from four to five today. I'll just just simply I'll send out a link. It will be the same link as before, but you can join and and come to my office hours if you want a demo or something. Uh, if you did not do in, hot in your midterm, um, then I what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put a quiz online at some point. Okay, um, and I'll put out an announcement about that. I will just simply take this quiz, and I'm going to simply add your uh, the points for this quiz to the uh, to the, your exam. Give, basically, it's going to be bonus points. Okay, so, um, and I'll give you guys a couple of attempts on it. When's the next test? What is this, week nine, I believe? So, probably week after next. Uh, I'm gonna figure out oh, the fairest thing, but I think I'm gonna allow people who got above the 70 also to take it, so. How will the exam work? Excellent question. Um, but simply, um, I'm going to be, what if you never got your exam grade back? Your exam or your exam grade? Um, if you, oof. Okay, if you didn't get your exam grade, period, speak to me. Because um, if you, Maybe. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, I will also have this uploaded. Um, ugh, at some point. Okay. <laughs> we can demo anytime, right? Yes, yes. Okay, exam in two weeks, it will be online, it will be on Canvas. Um, I'll try to make it as un, un obtrusive. Yes, I should have changed your exam after if you sent me an email to get your exam grade changed. The demo will be in Zoom, yes, during my office hours. Okay, any other questions? Yes, I will send a link. It'll be this same link, by the way. Um, music. We'll send out music as well. Okay. Jeez. Uh, Everybody wants my music. Practice exam. Of course there's going to be a practice exam. You can ask questions during my office hours. They're normal office hours. Just I just won't be at risk of getting sick or getting anybody else sick. All right. When is the exam? Um... Not before April, four o'clock are office hours from four to five, just like normal. Yes. Screen sharing. It's gonna be open everything. The exam will be open everything. You will get more details. All right, it is now 3.20. I am going to, uh, if you have any individual questions about this, but I will let you know how the exam will work. Nope, I will be doing a lecture on Thursday as well. Yes, my music. Okay, I will send it. <laughs> All right, bye. All right, I'm gonna stop this before it goes on forever. This is a lecture that never, oh, screen. Uh, primarily orchestral stuff. Okay, so Discord link. That's the last thing and then, then I'm leaving. class invite people to the discord copy don't have a twitch yet either of those will work any of those will work okay
Don't have a Patreon yet.